My name is YY Nu, and I am a Rohingya Muslim from Myanmar. I grew up in the town of Budidang in Rakhine state of Myanmar with my grandma, parents, and siblings. My father worked as a school teacher for about 30 years and was elected to parliament in the 1990 election. It is a rich Rohingya tradition to live together with their parents and children as a big family and is one we cherish so much. But in Myanmar, due to systemic persecution for decades, severe forms of marginalization and violence and genocide, Rohingya families' lives are torn apart and separated in different parts of the country or the world. So many have been killed or forcibly deported. I haven't seen my grandma for a long time and may not be able to in my entire life due to travel bans against my community. This is a severe form of harm to my family and my community. This is my story. Please welcome YY New. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for this opportunity to speak here today. I'm very honored to be here. As we gather to discuss religious freedom, I remember and pay tribute to all victims and survivors of the past and current religious persecution. I was born and grew up in Rakhine State, which is western part of Burma, where we Rohingya have resided for generations as our native land. However, in my generation, our existence has become a crime due to our ethnicity and religion. For decades, Burmese government have denied our history, our identity, our citizenship, and deprived us of all our basic human rights, including freedom to travel, to marry, to give birth, to go to school, to conduct economic activities, or to have access to healthcare and to practice religious activities. And the list goes on. I was born into insecurity and persecutions, and my entire life has been subjected to many forms of systemic and structural discriminations and dehumanizations, including being imprisoned for seven years at the age of 18 as my entire family, as a Rohingya political family. Yet, I feel I am a privileged one in my community. My experience is nothing comparable to the experiences of the 1.1 million victims and survivors in Bangladesh refugee camps who had to flee during the genocidal campaign in 2017 and the daily experiences of the remaining 600,000 Rohingya in Myanmar. These survivors and victims witness the most horrific experiences, including the killing of their family members, throwing children into, their, into fire, rape thousands of women, including um, in front of them in most cases, and forcing them to flee their home after torching hundreds of villages. Each and every one of us is a testament to the genocide that we continue to endure every day. For decades, the Burmese military has used this brutal and divide and rule tactics of persecutions against the ethnic and religious minorities across the country. Today, the coup in Myanmar is the result of the wall failure to hold the perpetrators of this atrocity crimes, the military, accountable. Since February, the same military has been using similar tactics against the older people in Myanmar and killed over 900 people, including children and elderly, and detained over 6,000 and forced thousands more to flee from their homes. To end this human suffering, 
we must first recognize the problem as it is and then work on addressing root causes. For years, many civil society organizations, including my organization, Women's Peace Network, have advocated the world about the decade-long mass atrocity crimes in Burma. But the world has not listened to us. The international community now must recognize these crimes as it is. Now is the time for the US Secretary of the State to recognize the Rohingya genocide before its fourth anniversary next month. Second, we must take concrete actions to hold violations of religious freedom accountable. I urge the US government to use the international justice mechanisms to end the military leader's impunity and to the US Congress to pass Burma uh, Human, Human Rights and Freedom Act, Burma Act at House, and the Rohingya Genocide Act immediately. Ending the military's impunity will not only help the survivors of Rohingya Genocide and other civilians of Burma, but also will send a signal to other regimes around the world that their actions have consequences. Third, we must implement measures to protect the religious and ethnic minorities. We must see that the protections of the minorities and religious freedoms are connected, and that the ethnic and religious minorities are targeted in many parts of the world. History has shown repeatedly that the people in power, especially in authoritarian regimes, use their religions as a tool to sustain their power. With the global rise in authoritarianism, including in Burma, it is now more important than ever to uplift the religious minorities and act on protecting religious freedom. Finally, as I remember, as a, as a member of the persecuted minority, I believe that no one should feel to be born as a crime or persecuted based on their identity. People like us, from the affected community have been doing everything within our capacity day and night for justice and freedom. It is up to those who are in power now to act. The world cannot fail us again. Thank you very much.